In this video, I'm going to cover a subject that we get a lot of requests for training on, which is how to replace belts in a dispenser. The problem with something like this is that each belt in each model of dispenser will be a completely different procedure. So the goal in this video is to show you, in general, what the process of belt replacement looks like. And hopefully you'll be able to apply what you learn to the specific dispenser that you're working on. Let's get started. If you're going to replace belts, we recommend removing the dispenser from the ATM and doing the work somewhere where you can organize all of the parts as you remove them and not lose small screws, clips, or springs. We also recommend that you always replace belts in pairs, even if only one belt is broken or worn. New belts will have a different tension than an old belt, so don't mix them, just replace both belts. The cash rides in the flats of the belts, so this means that there is always an upper and lower set of belts, or an inside and outside set. You don't always need to replace both sets, just the left and right pairs of the set that you do. To order new belts, in some cases, you may be able to get the part number from the belt itself. There should be a number silk screened on the flat part of the belt, usually beginning with S3M. In this case, it's S3M-699. Use that number when searching our parts store. There is sometimes a diagram to help you identify if that is the correct belt. If you're having a hard time identifying the specific belt you need, please contact your mega support with your dispenser type and we can help. When you're ready to start, look at the path or loop of the belts that you want to replace. Beginning with the ends of this loop, each roller or shaft within this loop of belts will need to be removed at some point in the process. If you're working on a set of belts that's inside the dispenser, then consider how much of the upper section of belts will need to be removed for you to access the lower section. To replace this particular set of belts, I've identified five rollers, the note guides, and three sensors that will need to be removed to access and swap out the belts. The two end rollers are unique, so they shouldn't be a problem to remember where they go. However, for these three rollers on top, I'm going to use tape to label each roller. Then I'm going to take some photos so I remember exactly where each roller goes. You also want to look at the sides of the dispenser, relative to each of the rollers being removed to see if there's anything in the way of the screws or clips that hold each roller. Here I can see that the dispenser control board will be in the way of these screws, so I'll need to remove that board or at least move it down so I can access the screws behind it. Then I'm going to unscrew, unplug, and remove these three sensors. I'm now going to unscrew these rollers in the middle of the belt path and leave them sitting here for now. This will relieve tension on the belts and provide enough slack for me to remove the front roller. Undo these springs on the front roller using some pliers. Then push the roller end over to one side so you can lift it out the top. As you do this, remove the old belts and feed on the new belts. In some cases, like this example, you might find it easier to remove several rollers at once.
You're going to do this throughout the whole belt path. Remove a roller to take off the old belts, and then replace the roller with new belts as you go. I now need to remove this section with the plastic note guides, so I can take off the old belts and route the new. Undo the screws holding the top bar, and then reach in and pull out these note guides. Take photos if you need help remembering how they fit back in. While most of the rollers are held in with screws, some have springs like the front roller, and some have bearings and clips like this roller. To remove this roller, first remove the small belt. Next, we're going to remove the gear by carefully removing this E-clip with a small flat screwdriver. It's really easy for these to fly across the room if you're not careful. With the clip removed, take the gear and pin off and set them aside. Then remove the clip holding this bearing. Remove the bearing from the roller shaft by pushing from the inside of the CDU towards the outside. On the opposite side, there is a blue plastic wheel and the encoder wheel. Remove the screws that hold these to the roller shaft. and then temporarily move the encoder sensor out of the way. Remove the clip and bearing from this side. You'll notice that this roller has belts going towards the front and also belts going down the back. In order to relax the tension on these back belts, I'll need to unscrew this lower roller and leave it in place. As you remove and replace each of these various rollers, make sure to check each plastic gear. The gears are pinned to the shaft and sometimes they can crack or break. If that happens, the gear can wobble as it turns, which causes the belt to ride up on the edge of the gear pulley. This is how belts can wear out in the first place, so take your time and check each gear. If you find that one is broken, then the gear or roller shaft assembly should be replaced along with the new belts. If the belts you're replacing have one edge that is noticeably worn or frayed, then that's telling you that one or more of the gears in that path is likely damaged. I can now remove this back roller. As I reinstall it, I make sure that the new belts are in place, as well as the other set which go down the back. Once the bearings and clips are back in place, reinstall the gear and pin on the motor side,
and the encoder wheel and sensor along with the blue wheel on the opposite side. Reinstall the lower roller to restore tension on those belts. Now, reinstall the three note guides and the shaft that holds them in place. Put the other roller shaft assemblies back in place, but don't yet tighten the screws. Reinstall the springs to the front roller. First, use the blue plastic wheel to turn the dispenser over by hand and make sure that the belts are running true. As you spin the dispenser, the belt should not be trying to ride up on the edges of the gears. If that looks good, you can tighten up the screws on the rollers. Replace the sensors and make sure that the wires are reconnected. Reinstall the control board and any covers removed to access screws. Some of the roller shaft screws have elongated holes. This allows you to increase or decrease belt tension. After replacing the belts, set the tension in the middle. The tension is generally not critical, but it should be equal across both sides. The next step will be to put the dispenser back in the machine and do a couple of test dispenses or transactions to verify that it's working. If you install the dispenser and then get sensor errors, check the sensors that you removed. Make sure that the cables are connected and that the sensors are facing each other. Make sure a belt is not coming off causing a blockage. Also, check all the cables going to the dispenser control board. One last note, it's normal for the new belts to shed some of the urethane or rubber coating as the belts break in. If you see small piles of black dust under one of the rollers, that's not a concern. Just make sure that there are not frayed edges indicating that something is rubbing. Remember, each belt replacement is going to be different, and sometimes it's a bit of a puzzle to get the belts in and out. Hopefully this has given you an idea of what to look for and what to expect. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please contact Genmega Support.